Hi, my name is Shalise with Illuminati.com. How are you doing today? I'm good. How are you? It's so nice to meet you. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day to speak with me. I know that um, you have a, a really busy schedule, so I do appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, so let me just jump right into it. So I know that you can kick ass. Obviously, we've seen you in Batwoman, right? Um, so I thought this was really cool to see you in a, a non-superhero um, role. What differences did you notice from filming Double Life versus your previous work? Oh, so much. I, I think that they're all so different, you know, even when they feel similar, they're very different, very different circumstances, very different life story that I accept. Um, I'm not a mistress on that one. <laughs> you know, uh, my boyfriend wasn't murdered on that woman, you know, so it's just like, first of all, I don't even date men on that one. <laughs> so, so it's just a really, um, it's, it's different. It's like different in a great way. That's good. Like you, so you prefer this type of filming versus like the kind of like, yeah, <laughs> like some more thrillers and we expect more thrillers from you. Oh, all day. Got it. Oh, comedy, rom-com. Oh. <laughs> well, this does, this film um, screams like being a girl's girl. You know, typically we have a lot of situations where this arises in real life and the, the girls instantly turn on each other without even thinking about like blaming the men. So if the roles were reversed, if double take was two men and one woman that had been killed, how do you think the guys would be different from how you guys took it in your roles? You know, I think that like, first of all, they always, anytime it's like a woman who is having like infidelity in a movie and it's a thriller, one of the guys is like insane or crazy. And, like, <laughs> it's like, I kill everybody, you know? It's never the two guys then go try to solve the woman's murder. Like, no, they don't <laughs> do that for us because then that would make us too alpha, you know? Right. Um, and so it would be fun. First of all, I don't want to get killed. Like, I want to live, but like, it would be fun seeing the two men go through what we went through. Like, be emotional. First of all, you got cheated on. <laughs> and yeah. we were emotional. Now let's see you be emotional. <laughs> and then come together, guys, and solve my case. <laughs> <laughs> I, th I think that this would be a whole different, I don't even think it would be a thriller. I think it'd be more like an action. Oh my God. Like, it, it gave me like, this means war. Do you remember that movie with, um, who was in it? Tom Hardy and Reese Witherspoon and Chris Pine. Do you remember that movie? Yeah, but they'd be warring with each other instead of figuring out who killed me. Yeah. And then I think that they didn't even want to like blame her. They were just like, they're just at it at their necks. Like, no, I'm, I'm a better guy. Um, yeah. And I think it'd be. Her, yeah. way different film um so these particular characters did go through some very scary moments to find the truth if you were in this situation how would you handle it would you let the authorities do it or would you go to the lengths that joe and sharon did i think they knew too much you know they they already knew so much that they had to investigate you know if i knew as much as they knew i think i'd have to investigate too yeah I think it's dangerous but i get why they did it you know they needed to know they needed to be able to come together, put it all on the table. Oh, wait, this goes here and this goes there. Let's go figure this out. Let's go follow this, especially when you're talking to the cops and they're not doing anything, which is a common thread in most of these stories, you know? And so I understood why they did and I probably would do the same thing. Have you known anything like this in real life, whether from like your hometown or anything like this, that's kind of been like a crazy situation? Not like somebody got killed and they're trying to find the killer. No. <laughs> you know, wow. social media has so many things. Like you get on Twitter all day long and there's always some kind of like crazy thread of like, hey, check this out. And so I just like every, I mean, I'm from Houston. Um, so like there's stuff like I've definitely witnessed something to this extent, maybe not to them going to like, you know, go search for them themselves, but it has been some like double life type things. Yeah. Oh, yeah. well, yeah. Double life part of it. Heck yeah. I think a lot of people are living double lives. Oh, for sure. <laughs> and a lot of them in the celebrity field too, you know? Yeah. Um, so I have watched some of your interviews, of course. I'm a fan. And I heard you mention in a previous one that you love Angela Bassett, right? Yes. Yeah. So besides her or along with her, um, is there anyone else that you'd love to work with in your career? I love the greats. I mean, Viola Davis, of course. But even like when, in like my generation of actors, like I love Daniel. I mean, we. I think he's like our our version of, um, of, of, I won't, I'm not going to say Denzel, but like our version of that round of actors, you know, and Jonathan Majors and, um, um, who else really, really does it for me right now? Um, 
There's one name I was looking to see if you're gonna say. There's a name I was looking for. I love honestly that I think is so underrated that I really who do you think I was gonna say? Michael B. Jordan. (laughs) You know who I love? Who I really think is absolutely amazing that I think is underrated. Who's that? Nicole Bahari. Who was out of here? Nicole Bahari. Okay. Okay. I don't know who she is. She was in um, the episode of Black Mirror with Anthony Mackie. She played his wife. Yes, Um, that scene was so powerful. So powerful. She's so good. good. Uh, She's been in so many things. And I I can't, she just got the morning show with uh, Jennifer Aniston. And I just think she's authentic. I think that she's, she's good. I think Michael Jordan is good too. Because you brought him up. I do want to say that. But I think she's amazing. Yeah, no, I like, I I think um, that particular scene pops up on socials all the time. And when they're talking about like, really like a good, like black lead, that scene pops up all the time. So I, de- I know exactly what you're talking about. I didn't even, I didn't hundred percent recognize the name, but I knew her when you said that, cause I've seen that everywhere. So yeah. Is there any other, like, um, I would say maybe not so much like series or sagas that you are a fan of, whether like it's like Harry Potter or anything like that, that you would love to like work on. Um, series or sagas. Um, you know, they're doing like a lot of remakes and they're like just coming out every other month or something coming out. Yeah, I know. I heard they were coming out with um Harry Potter as a series. Yeah, they, I think I'm excited for it. I just, I don't know. I just, I don't, I don't know. I can't see that. I grew up with that generation, so I don't know who they're going to like cast, but. No, but the dope part about it is they'll have more space to dive into stories. Yes. Harry Potter is such a world. Yeah. Now you can really, it'll be like a, like a, a Game of Thrones where you can really just like dive into these different, like, you know, sub stories and sub plots and you get to get into more characters, more colorful okay. characters. You know, really help to bring a lot of things and a lot of actors, opportunities that are very, that are going to be very grand. Um, I don't know. I, you know, I didn't really watch a lot of, other than Harry Potter, I don't think I watched a lot of series or sagas. Mm-hmm. Um, when I was growing up, I kind of was like, I would watch the same things over and over and over. I'm like, like that. I watched Cast with the Curling Ghost almost every night. I watched um, Aladdin every night. I watched uh, um, Lion King every night. Like, I just watched the same things over and over. And then when I got became a Disney girl, are you a Disney girl? Is there a princess? Maybe like Princess and the Frog that you want to see, you know? Yeah, sure. Yeah, I guess. But I just, I, I think I'm so open to everything. There's nothing that I feel like I'm attached to that it's like, this is what I have to play. And I can say, yes, there's obviously like if the opportunity comes and, but there's nothing that like, I, I just like sit around and say, oh my God, I can't wait to play, you know, Princess Jasmine. Like, I think that the 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 great part about this journey, this acting journey is that there are so many stories. Right kind of makes it more fun when I just like allow what's to come to me to come to me. I do believe in manifestation. So there are roles that I would love to be a part of. Like if you, and I thought what you meant when you said sagas, like when you talked about Harry Potter, like series, right. but like of the story of Columbiana, they never really brought that back. I think that finding another way to bring that kind of story out. I don't know if you remember. Is that the one with Zoe Saldana? Yes. Yes. Oh, that was so good. Yeah. Was so good. I don't know if you remember Salt with Angelina Jolie. Like, yes. That's my generation. Mm-hmm. The Tomb Raider. I love that. Um, just any, like those strong women, like badass, like kick ass. There was one that falls in that category that had, um, uh, of course, there's a Charlize Theron one, but I'm thinking of a Scarlett Johansson one. Oh, yeah. I, it reminded me of Salt when you said that. And, and that's exactly the genre that I was thinking of exactly which one you're talking about is there any genre that you won't touch that like like a horror movie that you're like no i won't do horror demonic horror movies yes okay that makes a lot of sense awesome well final question um right now cinemacon is going on in vegas um and there's a lot of titles that are coming out so out of all the titles that are coming out in 2023 is there anything in particular that you're excited for um and of all of the titles coming out, there's girl, so I, many. I just I, I I live it up. There's like Op- Oppenheimer. Uh, we got Barbie, Wonka. I'm a big Timothy Chalamet fan. Um, Flash, of course. Uh, yeah, you know what? It's interesting. At first, to be 100 percent honest, I wasn't really. I grew up playing Barbies. Barbies is a huge thing for me. Like, but when I saw it, I was, just, you know, I was like, okay, this looks good. Really cool. <laughs> 
really, you know. And so um, then when I realized that there's like this like twist to it and this like, you know, mm-hmm. and I, I, mean, I like it, like the dark, there's a darkness to it. Like I kind of was more intrigued. And then they were saying that the director put all these like little nuggets throughout the film that kind of um, is supposed to give it this Alice in Wonderland type of story to it as well. And I love that story. So I, I would say their eggs. Yeah, like these Easter eggs, but that that's going to be a theme for it. And so, okay. oh, not Alice in Wonderland, um, Wizard of Oz type of thing. Oh, okay, 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 okay. The- yeah, they were unveiling that there too. They were talking about that film. So that's there's so much stuff coming out. It's so, so exciting. Fun. Well, I can't wait to see what you do next. I've I've always loved seeing your work, and um, this was this was a great film, and I can't I know you're gonna do so many more things. So I'm so excited. Thank you so much for talking with me today. I really appreciate it.